this is going to be an interesting angle, isn't it? <laughs> right. Um, hello. Uh, welcome to another Telegrations video. This one's a little different. Um, I recently watched, uh, insert YouTuber name here. <laughs> um, apologies. Um, and he did a video called, I watched a hundred films over the summer or something like that. So it was over a condensed period of time and he watched a hundred films and he reviewed them all. So my video is called, I watched a hundred movies for this. And that's right. It's, I watched a hundred movies just to review them all. And I'm not even joking. I watched a hundred movies in a row, which is not a hard thing to do. Um, I couldn't really give myself much limitation in terms of over time because I started in maybe September, maybe October. Um, I think late September. It was definitely during the end of my course for the year, which actually ended at the end of October. Um, so I guess we'll just jump into it because... Yeah, this was definitely during October. So I started in October, ended it just at the end of December uh, 2018. So, hi 2019, how's it going? Um, so yeah, pretty much the rule is I watch 100 films, then rank them from... Uh, in this case, I meant to rank them from 100 to 1. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Because that's ridiculous. Ranking 100 films. Um, so instead, I'm just going to give you a brief review of all of them. Yeah. I'm just going to go in order, because that just works better for me anyway. This is as relaxed a position as I can get. I'm staying at the hotel right now. I've got work tomorrow and reasons. So, yeah, let's just get into it. Um, so, yes, number one, life off the Beth image is going to be here. Um, it's an interesting concept. Um, I'm not going to go into the films too much. I'm just going to give you kind of a one to three lines of a review, uh, and that'll be it. Um, it's an interesting concept, uh, a few repetitive parts, but, um, overall it adds up to something interesting in the end. Um, also, Aubrey Plaza is pretty mint, so, you know, you can't lose there if you're a fan of hers, like myself. Next up we have Batman Begins. Um, slow but graceful, yeah. Um, next up we have The Dark Knight. I mean, like, come on. I, I, I watch these films, and these, these, these two Batman films in 4K. Like, they're just brilliant. Police story. Fun and action-packed. Yeah. Police story 2. Extraordinary. Um, definitely a big improvement over its predecessor. Eyes Wide Shut. Nicole Kidman. Damn, son. It's a very spot on review <laughs> on my part. Um, Under the Skin. Oh, beautifully creepy. Dances with Wolves. The extended version. Yeah, pretty much cinematic grace. Just, yeah. Blade Runner 2049. Yes, this is like the fifth or sixth time I've watched it since it came out, and it is just pure perfection. Also known as my favourite film of all time, presently. Game Night. Quite a fun watch. Very funny, very well done. Legend of the Drunken Master. Different to the original, um, which is just called The Drunken Master. Um, bit fun, and pretty fucking badass. English dub sucks, but it's the only way I could watch it for some reason. The Predator. Well, that happened. Dreams. A significant Kurosawa film that's very underrated. The Foreigner. An interesting thriller with excellent fight scenes. The Wicker Man, the final cut. No, not the one with Nicolas Cage, the better version. Um, it's somewhat predictable, but... um. Overall, excellent and daunting. Mm. Blue Velvet. Oh, this has got to be someone's reality. Deep Red. A slow building thriller with some great moments and an awesome soundtrack. Suspiria. The original. Love it. 
just absolute cinema right there. Spider-Man from 2002, classic Raimi. Spider-Man 2 from 2004, really is the best superhero film, I say, having done this review before seeing Into the Spider-Verse. We'll get there. Venom was cool, right? Like, kind of. Like, there's like one part in the film, it's like the middle of the film where he's infected by the symbiote and it's kind of cool and then he does the fights and stuff and it's like, look, now he's Venom. Look, now he's Tom Hardy in a fish tank with lobsters. Yeah. That was a film. Scanners. Slow but interesting. A simple favour. <sighs> Sexy and delectable. Scream. Um, a 90s thing. Um, <laughs> seriously not scary, in my opinion. Just those kind of stabby, stabby thrillers just don't really get me. Um, but I mean, Shaggy's in it, so you can't lose. Pretty good. Rush Hour. It's, it's a fun 90s thing, I guess. I mean, Chris Tug is funny. Jackie Chan is pretty badass. It's, you know, timely with what was going on in Hong Kong at the time, but yeah. Bad Times at the El Royale. Damn, this movie has balls. They live fucking gold. Absolute fucking gold. Rush Hour 2. Um, good Jackie Chan stunts, but lackluster everywhere else. Rush Hour 3. So racist and so sexist. Blimey. Scream 2, why was Dewey not the killer? And, or, or why wasn't it like a group-wide conspiracy that all of Sydney's friends were the killers? It was just a oh, waste of potential. First Man, tense, beautiful, Damien Chazelle and Ryan Gosling are godsends. Scream 3, Actually, my favourite. Um, hilarious and spooky enough with certain jump scares. Um, I don't even think it's bad. I really liked it. I really just enjoyed the crap out of it. Maybe because I expected it to be horrible and it was just really fun. Personal Shopper. A masterpiece of a film. Good as a personal drama, good as a horror film. Halloween from 1978. 4K Master, and creepy as always. Scream 4, closer to the original but lacking the charm. Apostle, pretty much the Wicker Man from 1973, but with Dan Stevens and done by Gareth Evans. Still pretty good though, but if you've seen the Wicker Man, you pretty much know what you're gonna get. Except this has like got better effects. Suspiria from 2018. Just like Evan says on his Leatherbox review, freaking witches, man. I highly suggest seeing this film. It if, if you like the original, you'll you'll love this. If you love uh, anything but it, like Luca Guadagnino, you will love this. It's just an excellent horror film. Halloween from 2018 or oh, Halloween 4K. Get it. Not exactly, but kind of. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite the spook fest, but overall pretty rad. I, I quite liked it. The Armour of God. Jackie Chan trying to be Indiana Jones. Sure, why not? The Shining. Oh, my favourite Kubrick film. But I still haven't seen all of his films, but still my favourite Kubrick film. A Quiet Place. Tense and excellently crafted. Reanimator, pretty good with some fun, cheesy, but classic horror fun. With some cheesy, but classic horror fun. It's just a good film. <laughs> it's cheesy, it's fun, it's horror, it's great. Bohemian Rhapsody, <sighs> kind of boring, kind of fun. I mean, I liked everything in it except for the story, and I was bored during the whole entire film. Yeah.
The story was predictable, just kind of dull. Yeah. Bride of Reanimator. Not as good as the first, but still pretty decent. Phantom Thread. Pure and gorgeous. The Master. A movie about Joaquin Phoenix trying to get laid. Yep. Speed Racer. The Wachowskis have made some top films, haven't they? Yeah. This is one of them. Speed Racer. Top film. The Terminator. 80s horror perfection. Robocop. 80s satire perfection. A Star is Born. Don't really get the hype, but I found it enjoyable and excellently crafted, so yeah. yeah it's good. But yeah. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Mmm, the chaste of childhood. <laughs> the Eyes of Laura Mars. Tommy Lee Jones's hair, am I right? Yes, I am. That's his hair. Fantastic piece. Two. Electric shitaloo. Because it's just absolute garbage. No thank you. Bye. Whatever happened to Baby Jane? Life is cruel and this film is amazing. Ghost World. A nice adaptation. An entertaining film. Bone Tomahawk. Beautiful yet... Ghastly. Dragged across concrete. Maybe it's a metaphor? Evil Dead with commentary. I won't specifically note that because I watched it with commentary, um, which I hadn't done before, and as much as it is a great film, it is actually excellent with it, the commentary track as well. Evil Dead 2. 4K at the Nova, fucking excellent. Top film. Monster Squad, it, it was fun at least. Needed more Gilman, but it was fun. The General from 1926. Clever, funny, and well made. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. The finest of German expressionism. Fright Night, greatest, great. Fright Night, great. 80s horror, easily my favorite horror, um, easily my favorite vampire film next to From Dust Till Dawn. Too fucking rad. The Life Aquatic with Steve Bizno or Bizarre or whatever. Um, bizarre and fun. So, a Wes Anderson film. The Virgin Suicides. Beautiful, charming, yet mesmerizingly haunting. Halloween H2O. H2O just had more, just, <laughs> Halloween, Halloween H2O. H2O, just add more useless murder, boring film anyway. Holy crap, was it boring. A bigger splash. If you haven't watched Ralph Fiennes dance in this movie, you have not lived. The Matrix. Well, it's the fucking Matrix, of course it's good. The Matrix Reloaded. Pretty rad and talks about some pretty nice philosophical concepts. The Matrix Revolutions. In the end, it was all a dream. A pretty rad dream, but still. The Fog from 1980. A very mood-driven ghost story, nicely crafted. Widows. A well-crafted, dramatic heist film. With a very tall woman who is Australian, and I commend that. Clap, 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 clap. Ladies in Black. A delightful Aussie period piece film about the meaning of appearance. It's very nice. Sorry to bother you. There are two layers of perfection. Tessa Thompson and everything else in this film. Perfection. Probably one of the best films of the year, if not the best film. Hard to say. There are a lot of great films this year. 2018, that is. The Haunting, a 1960s horror whose focus on character brings a disturbing presence to a visually and audibly, and audibly enthralling film. Village of the Damned, another 1960s chiller with an interesting premise and a pretty great story. And a great ending. Creed, a compelling drama and just damn good. Black K. Klansman, a powerful film about a true story. Worth a watch for excellent filmmaking and social commentary. 
The Blues Brothers. What can I say? It's a classic. Overlord. Holy shit. Mandy. It's like a David Lynch film on LSD. Except... I was going to say except less confusing than the narrative, but like... It's just less confusing narratively. <laughs> Roma. Simply gorgeous and has one of the best uses of Dolby Atmos that I've ever heard. Just pure cinema right there. This Island Earth. Great special effects, quick to the point story-wise, and overall a very watchable sci-fi film. A classic sci-fi film. Grease. A stunning 4K. <laughs> um, as fun as ever. Goodfellas. Masterful filmmaking, but I kind of don't buy it. Like, I feel like it's something to do with the characters pretty much excluding Pesci's character because Pesci is, Joe Pesci is amazing in it. But, like, I just, I didn't care much for the characters. Like, I didn't, it didn't convince me to keep in the film. I kept watching the film all the way to the end, but, like, yeah, I mean, I know that the bad guys have every, and everything. And I've, like, I've watched The Goldfather and stuff like that, and it's the same kind of deal, but it's just, I don't know. I thought it was really good. I just didn't really care for it in a way. I, I, I still, yeah, I enjoyed it, but for its filmmaking, but, yeah. Creed 2. I mean, if you like the first one, you'll like the second one. Pretty simple. I just don't know where they're going to go from here, because these two films are really fucking good. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Hot diggity dog do I love this film. Climax. Casper Noe's interpretation of LSD. Definitely for experimental film lovers like myself. Um, impressive film work overall, though it gets a little boring amount, like, within the chaos. Just in certain scenes, because they kind of drag for a long time. These are, like, long shots. No cuts. It's just just, yeah. But yeah, if you've seen his previous film, um, one that I'll get to later, you'll, you'll pretty much know what to kind of expect in a way. Um, Twelve Monkeys, classic sci-fi mystery film. Maybe my favourite from Terry Gilliam, I don't know. That That's arguably still Brazil, but I don't know. These two films are just, those two films are top. Sicario, Day of the Soldado, a, a decent sequel with some tense scenes and an interesting, an interesting cinematography. Uh, worth a watch if you enjoyed the first one. Cam. Firstly, do not watch the trailer. Secondly, it's got a slow build to a great finale. Um, I mean, even if you watch the trailer, you'll only kind of get spoiled for maybe the first 40 minutes. But then you're just like, where does it go from here? And that's when it just gets mental. And it's great. Malcolm from 1986. A cute little Aussie heist film. Uh, perfectly crafted, great jokes, set pieces, and characters. Definitely worth a watch. Sunshine. A positive, happy film that totally isn't a sci-fi horror with existential undertones. Pretty mint, though. Mad Max. The original. Turbocharged, but kind of slow in parts. Yeah. Um, Inferno, from 1980. A worthy sequel to Suspiria. Um, with similar colour treatment, uh, effects, and horror, but somewhat incoherent in terms of the plot that kind of jumps between characters um, a lot. Um, definitely a more operatic um, film uh, and kind of dreamlike than Suspiria, but definitely worth a watch. It's, if you liked the original Suspiria, you'll, you'll like Inferno. Gerald's Game. Slow, bold creepiness that only gets scarier as the film progresses. Some excellent performances, directing, and yeah, just good. Sunset Boulevard, a blissful nightmare. Um, but I mean, it has some excellent performances, and it's stunning and perfect till the very last line. The Color of Pomegranates, artistic and enlightening, not very conventional, but but beautiful. Die Hard, because it's the best Christmas film out there, duh. You can kind of tell when I watch that film. Christmas Day. <laughs> it's a great film. I love it. You can watch it any time of the year, but like it is still a top film. And last but not least, Enter the Void. Um, existential nihilism on LSD. 
with a side of a protagonist who kind of want wants to screw his sister. Um, but still, it's it's pretty good. I mean, Casper No films are the kind of films that you definitely need to sit down and watch it. You can't just have it on in the background. Um, but it's definitely, definitely something. Yeah. Excellent. Well, this was my 100 films, 100 review list. Um... Unlike the other, I think it's Christian, unlike his video, I did not do this in a rank. I just watched 100 films and then reviewed them all very briefly. Um, yeah. If you want me to do something else like this or we'll do more movie reviews, I'll probably do that. Um, yeah. Bye, I guess. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like, share, subscribe for more. Um, if, if you want to argue about some of these films, probably good fellas, <laughs> then please d discuss in the comments. I'd, I'd, I'd like to kind of, I'd, I'd like to get other people's opinions on films. I'm very communicative with, with other people, yeah. So yeah, um, bye. Thanks for watching.